Um, we have a spoken word by Jaden and Valerie. So can we give them a hand as they come up? Does anybody even know that you're a Christian? I said, does anybody even know that you're a Christian? When you walk to, when you walk to school and when you go to your job, does anybody, can anybody tell by your actions what you believe? Can anybody tell the difference between what you believe and how you act? Because you're always at the club with a drink or talking to somebody behind their back. And when they finally find out you're a Christian, they tend to start talking behind your back as well. And you wonder why when people look at you, they can't even respect the fact that you're a Christian anymore. Because you may be the only example that they have. And if they can't tell the difference between your walk and their walk, then they're not going to follow God's path. Does anybody even know that you're a Christian? Do the people even know that the God you believe exists? When somebody who doesn't believe God loses a loved one in their family, do they even think to go to you for prayer? And if not, then since when did Jesus become your own personal secret for no one else to know? Are you serious? Jesus Christ didn't get stretched out on the cross so your testimony could be mysterious? Because silent testimonies have never saved souls, yet our testimonies say, stay low. And we wonder why our world is raising in hell. Because a lot of Christians are too worried about other people's opinions and too busy trying to save themselves. You know, I don't know what's worse. Nobody knowing I'm a Christian or the only people knowing that I'm a Christian are the people in my church. But what you have to understand is, people sacrifice their lives to spread the love of Jesus throughout the earth. And you mean to tell me, you're more worried about what other people think or believe? What if Jesus was more concerned about other people's opinions than the salvation you received? But they made him bleed until he bled, all his blood till he was dead. Nails and feet and thorns in his head. What if Jesus was less concerned about spreading the gospel and cared more about what other people said instead? But no, instead, he stood for what was right, so everybody in the world and everybody here in faith gospel could know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Does anybody know that you're a Christian by your actions? Or does everybody think that you're a Christian because you're acting? Does anyone know that you're a Christian by your actions, or does everybody think that you're a Christian while you're acting? And the only reason I'm asking is because uh, half of us are putting on a facade, trying to treat our walk with God, like, and expecting full-time benefits when he's only our part-time job. But working for God ain't no part-time gig. It's not a job nor a career. It's a lifestyle. Because what you have to understand is one soul's trash is another soul's treasure. Does anybody know that you're a Christian? Are you letting his light shine through? And if not, then how many more times are you going to deny Jesus before Jesus denies you? Does, Does anybody, anybody even know, know that, that you're, you're a Christian? Christian? That was beautiful. Come here, Jaden. Give me a hug, too. That was phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. That was wow. I think sometimes um, we have to... You have to really ask ourselves that. Does anybody know that we're a Christian? And if they do, how do they know? By the way we act, by the way we portray ourselves, by the way we are outside these four walls. So that was a really great spoken word, honestly. And they spoke it beautifully. That was phenomenal. That was amazing. Good job, you guys. Um, next, we're going to have a testimony. And this testimony is going to be by Janelle. So as Janelle comes up, can we give her a big warm welcome? Praise the Lord, church. Um, my testimony is about, um, uh, I've been battling a lot with my uh, skin and it's uh, I've went to the doctor, and they've uh, told me that, um, you know, you may have eczema or dermitis or, or an allergy. And I, um, you know, I've 
told you know my own family and then they have their opinions oh you know it might be this oh you know it might be that let me help you let me get something for you you know so there's so many medications that you can take for for the for what you have right but i believe in jesus christ i believe the healing of the lord jesus christ and it wasn't just healing that i needed on uh, out on the outside i needed healing also on the inside so i want to give god thanks because it was him that healed my skin my skin is now i was let me just tell you how it was before my skin was very itchy it had lots of bumps lots of scars uh, to the point where it was bleeding and um, I didn't think I could ever, my skin could ever be healed again. And um, now my skin is healed, it's healing, all the scars are going away and I know I, that is from God himself. It's not from medications, it's not from uh, people's, people's words, people's negative words, it's from the word. And I read the word and he gave me his encouragement and I just want to shout out loud to Jesus Christ because he is my healer, he is my savior and he healed my skin. Praise the Lord. I just want to give God thanks. Everything that everyone's saying is just getting me so emotional. This is just amazing. Um, again, uh, as Janelle was just speaking on, God, is, God hears your call. God hears when you call to him. And God will answer. So, again, it's just beautiful that Janelle was healed like that. And I just um, pray and hope that God continues to guide Janelle's life and her walk with Christ. So next we have Adeji, and Adeji is just going to come up and give us some offerings. He's going to bring, I mean, he, uh, some announcements. He's going to bring us up to speed with everything going in inside the church and around the church. So let's give Deji a hand. Every time I see his smile, I just smile. Like, <laughs> how are you, Deji? I'm doing good. Yeah. How is everyone today? That's good. That's good. So I'm going to be bringing the announcements to you guys. So uh, let's go. <laughs> All right. So first we have two Christmas service, one at 10 a.m. in the morning and 630 in the evening. So that's the first one. The second one is two New Year's Eve service. We've got one at 10 a.m. in the morning and 10 p.m. in the night. And you can also check the, the website, Faith Gospel Tabernacle, to, <laughs> to uh, get more information regarding the events throughout the week. Yes, sir. <laughs> and and uh, fourth, we have, on December 16th, we've got a Christmas party. Yeah! yeah, let's party it up for Jesus Christ. Amen. So... The tickets are $15 per person, and I'm afraid that's all the announcement we have. <laughs> Amen. However, I think we've got a special surprise. Good evening, everyone. I'm so did you forgot to say that on Friday we have youth every day? At, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We have we have youth, we have youth on Fridays at seven o'clock. Um, there's ages um, seven. Oh, sorry, seven to twenty-five. So it's split up into three different age groups. Um, it's there's a youth choir at six o'clock. So if you're interested in joining the youth choir, you could join. And yeah. And then on December 8th at 7 p.m., we'll be having our Christmas dinner in the basement of this church. It's $2 per person. Please purchase your tickets in the foyer. Okay. So now after the announcement, we've got the offering. So can I get everyone so we can bow down? 
and I pray as we do the offering. So, uh, Father Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to meet again. Thank you for everybody here. Thank you for bringing them here safely and sound. Thank you for the word spoken, the encouraging word that there's no one like you, that you see, you see, the, you see the outer and the inner, the beauty skin deep, that nothing compares to what you make in your creation. We thank you for that, Lord. And now, Lord, for the offering, Lord, I ask that you accept these offering um, in your uh, storehouse, Lord, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will be not enough room to contain for everybody. Amen. And we can do the offering now. That just got me in such a great mood. Thanks again for the announcements, Deji. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and just to clarify, um, the Chris, the tickets for the for the Dawson for Christmas banquet. That one's on the 16th. That one's 15, and the youth one again is two dollars. So I encourage everyone to come and just have a great time and fellowship with one another, and you'll be truly and richly blessed. Next, we have Alina, and Alina again is going to be. She's going to be going solo, and she's going to be doing her own spoken word. So can we give Alina a big, warm welcome? Good night, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Everyone's ready for the Christmas? Or is it too early? <laughs> so today I'm going to do a spoken word I did create on my own. I've been writing it for a while, and I decided to name it Love. Love. Like hate, it is a strong word. It means to show no hatred feelings to any person you are meeting. It means to have a passion for a person, thing, or fashion. To fall in love with one thing is not a bad thing to do, but to be able to love and enjoy everything, that will be all up to you. Love can be a distraction to people of all ages, but as long as you do the right action, it won't affect any of your wages. People care primarily about the other, and that's all they dream and see. But when they talk about it to their, to their mother, it becomes reality. 
Love can help the pain that has crossed, that has given you hard, sad feelings. When your life is this or way, all you need are nice, more warm greetings. The woman that cries out for love is not only to you, but also to God above. You see, she's not only getting enough, but in general, her life has been very tough, being neglected, ignored. It was very rough to deal with all these things, people taking her stuff, her feelings, her emotions, and slowly her home, letting her sit on this dirty throne, heart torn, no calls on her phone, letting her remember again that she's always alone. The man sometimes thinks he's cool. Coolness and popularity, that's his only rule. All he needs are bare friends so that there's no one to duel. But deep inside, you know he's a fool. Day to day, he feels this pain, pain so deep, it drowns in the rain. He knows he's got love, and so it seems. At school, at work, maybe you like some one wonderful dream, but when he wakes up to reality, his so-called parents' love may be brutality. Teens and kids of all ages all grow up to become one nation. But something that they might have in common is the misunderstanding of love and infatuation. Yeah, that word. Those desires you have in that situation when you meet a guy or a girl at Paintball Nation or knew when you were on probation that almost made you in this formation that you really didn't think over. Welcome to the real world. Love can betray anyone, any day. It could be April, March, or May. It could also be on your birthday. When betrayal hurts, you regret your flirts. Then you question why. Why do you feel like you want to cry? That's how the human race can find no grace. It can be easily shown on their face. What I learned in religion class is about finding grace, love, and peace. But I'm worried about the facts that there are a lot of people missing these. The real world is a complicated place. Even though it was created by God, he also created the human race. But some people think that he's a fraud, that he's always on our case. But he also made, Israel, he also made miracles like that rod that saved the Israelites' fate. That sea they all saw, recorded in time, way out of date. You may be thinking, what does God have to do with love? He's the ultimate, almighty display, although he lives just above. God sent his angels to protect humankind. For us humans, his artsy creation. Most of us are really blind that he wants us all to love each other as one nation. When we come together and unite, not just standing here, but planning to fight, please, just like your love bloom with all your might so that there might be room in your head to be possessed at night by the Prince of Peace, the Holy Spirit. Nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, the present nor the future. God gives unconditional love to us that we need to give to others, not just to our mothers, fathers, sons, or brothers, but also to that lady who crosses the street or even someone who lives in dead heat. The man with arthritis on his hands and feet, including your friends who just got beat. Love, like hate, it is a strong word. Have you been giving enough love lately? Thank you, guys. Um, next we have the, is the dance team ready? Everyone's ready? Okay. Okay, awesome. Next, we have the dance team, and they're going to be performing a dance. So, nonetheless, of course, dance team, dance, yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> nonetheless, can you give them a big uh, hand as they come up? Dance? With sand?
God provides. So why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides, God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, He multiplies. Just when I feel He won't show up on time, God provides, He'll come through. When the clouds of doubt rain down on you And test everything you thought you knew Now you finally see what God can do For you So tonight Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight Watch God provide. God provides. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. Or oh, what you see feels all that life will be. And will this be another year of misery for me? I just like to um, quickly tell the leader of the dance team if you need any more people, I'm available because um, I love to be a part of that. That was amazing. <laughs> um, next, we have Lunik, and Lunik is going to be giving a message. So, before Lunik, as Lunik comes up, I would just love to say that 
you will be truly, truly, truly blessed for what Lunik is about to say. Every time I talk to him and every time we talk about God, every time we just minister to each other about God, it's like I, we feel a presence around us. And I love, when Lunik, I love when Lunik speaks because he lets God speak through him. That's what I love most. So as Lunik come, can we give him a big hand? They're in Christmas colors with their red, too. Nice tie, nice tie. Now I have to be festive. <laughs> Good evening, church. I'd just like to say I was blessed by everything I've seen tonight, especially by the little kids. I love it when little kids sing. It was very beautiful seeing that. Um, this message, the title of this message is To Overcome. And... This, it, it all comes together so perfectly, how, how the dancing with Jesus came, was about overcoming sin and overcoming the, all the temptations that the devil throws at you. It all comes together so perfectly, the theme and Janelle's testimony and how she overcame um, the sickness of her skin. So um, I would like to start off with a beautiful verse. This verse comes from Revelations Verses from Revelations chapter 2, verses 26 and to 29. Please open your Bibles and let us read. The word of the Lord says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Father God, we would just, I just want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for your word. Lord God, I ask that as you pour your spirit out into me, pour your spirit out into your congregation. Open up their hearts and open up their minds. Open up my heart, Lord, and open up my mouth so that I may declare your word in the name of Jesus. May your word come out through me and may your word manifest and come into the people so that we may not only keep this word in here, but show this word to the world. Bring light into the world. Bring salt into the world. Lord, I thank you. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit manifests in all of us. Let your Holy Spirit move today, Lord. For Lord, I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to, to focus on the word overcome here. Are you overcomers? Let me ask that question. Are you overcomers? Amen. Tonight, I'm going to define why we are all overcomers. And how we can become overcomers. But, the, but first, I need to tell you exactly what the word overcome means. Overcoming means to decide, to, to succeed in dealing with an issue or prevailing over some kind of obstacle. As Christians, we have to prevail over these obstacles. We have to prevail over temptation, over sin, over doubt, over all the other issues and everyday struggles the devil tries to throw at us. The first one I would like to focus on is temptation. It's quite literally everywhere. Everywhere you turn, there is something to tempt you. Um, Pastor Brian actually touched on that this morning. There is something bombarding us every single way we turn. The devil is trying to attack us. But you, can, you could be working on some kind of project and the devil will distract you. You could be walking outside with your spouse and somebody attractive could walk by and you could get distracted by that person and fall into sin. You could be at the mall and you could see some, something sinful, you could get into it. The devil is going to attack you. Everywhere you turn, the devil will try and attack you. 
And, or maybe you could be fasting and you might have somebody sit beside you and start eating something very, very appetizing. And you could end up breaking your fast because the devil is going to try at every turn, especially if you're doing something for God. But fortunately, all of that can be avoided. And we can do it through the word of God. The word of God, let me tell you, the word of God is very, very powerful. In fact, I, I would like us to please turn to John chapter 1. And it, um, there's a two definitions for the word of God. And we're going to be using both of them tonight. Here's the first definition of the word of God. In the beginning was the word of God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Of course, Jesus is one and the same with God, right? However, when Jesus here is mentioned as the word of God, we can understand that Jesus was manifested at the beginning as the word. And whatever God proclaimed, it would happen. Whatever God would say, the word of God would manifest and come into existence. Jesus being the word of God, we can understand that through his covenants, all can be, everything that he promised will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. And everything we proclaim through Jesus, it will be fulfilled because he is the word and the word of God is truth. Now I'd like to continue reading through this verse. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him, not anything that was made, and not anything made that was made. In him was life, and in life the light of men. And in the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Without the word being Jesus, God could not have declared light into existence, nor could he have created all things. Jesus was literally the creator and the, breath, uh, and, and the breath of life within us. Whatever God said, the word existed. In John chapter 5 and verse 58, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He was there during creation, and, the Lord, and, and Jesus was manifested in the word of God. The word of God is recorded in the Bible, and therefore, everything that is in the Bible has to happen through Jesus Christ. The Lord prophesied in his, what, in his word, and behold, the word would come into existence, and it would come into flesh. Therefore, everything that was said in Isaiah prophesying that the being that Jesus become the coming of Jesus Christ had to come into flesh and it had to come into existence because it is the word of God and the word of God must come into existence and what is the darkness that was mentioned in these verses the darkness is the sin the darkness is the temptation and by the holy blood of Jesus and by his light darkness must flee darkness and sin must flee from us and if you get tempted by the enemy, just call out on the blood of Jesus and remind him of his defeat at Calvary. Remind him of his defeat at Calvary. And he, will, and he simply has no rebuttal. He has no answer to the blood of Jesus Christ. When you turn on the light into a dark room, what happens? The darkness must flee. The darkness has to go away. And I believe... That when Jesus is called the morning star because all the darkness is flee, it must flee when the sun rises. When the morning star rises, the night vanishes. Jesus creates the new day. Jesus is the morning star and Jesus is the new day for all of us. He takes all the darkness and pushes it away from us. That is the power of the word of the Lord. Now we, we need to get into the second definition of the word. What about this, the written word of God? The Lord Jesus himself 
showed us how to fight temptation in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Can you please open your Bibles and to explore this verse? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I want to emphasize the it is written part. Another thing that Satan cannot answer to is the written Lord, word of God. When you tell him it is written, he cannot dispute the fact that whatever comes out of the mouth of God and whatever is the word of God is utter truth. Secondly, the Lord prophesies something beautiful here. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We, we aren't meant to live on worldly, worldly and physical desires. We are meant to live by the substance of God. We are meant to feed off of his spiritual food. We cannot survive for eternity on physical food. We need to spend time with God, and we need to understand his word and meditate upon it. This is how we can avoid temptation. This is how we can avoid sin. And this is how we can get eternal life through the word of God. One of the best ways to avoid sin is to cut off anything related to it. What I mean by that is to avoid people places or illustrations or anything that can portray this sin, you must cut it off. For example, if you want to quit drinking, would you hang out with your drinking friends? No, this would be counterproductive. If you want to quit smoking, would you buy yourself a cigarette pack? Or would you go to any place that has cigarettes? No, that would also be counterproductive. If you want to stop watching pornography, would you talk about sexual things or make dirty jokes? No. That will only remind you of your sin and, try, and it'll, the devil will try and bring you back to it. Let's look at Peter, first, first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, be sober, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. Seeking whom he may devour. The devil is the most opportunistic entity known to mankind. He will find any, any way to attack you. So what is the solution? Don't give him an opportunity. He is waiting for you to make a mistake and he's waiting for you to think about anything re related, remotely related to that sin. He will pounce on it and attack you. So therefore, if something in your life is any way bit provocative, cut it off. Let us read Matthew chapter 18 and verse 8. Jesus says, wherefore, if thy hand and thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. That hand or that foot could be anything from friends, from devices, from your television, from, from a certain place that you usually attend or go to, that hand could be anything. And that hand, that hand or that foot must be cut off from your life. You cannot keep it in your life because it, it hinders your Christianity. It hinders the Christian life that you're supposed to follow, that you're supposed to lead. 
I would like to take it from a, a different a different angle, a scientific angle. There's something in our brains. There's a chemical in our brain called dopamine. This chemical gets released. It's a it's essentially a pleasure chemical. Whenever we do something pleasurable to us, it gets released and you feel pleasure. This is very important for life functions. Functions like eating, functions like drinking water and feeling refreshed, or reproductive reasons. But if this gets out of hand, it, will, it could turn you savage. It could make you only want to get pleasure. You can essentially get addicted off of this dopamine. This dopamine, if you have too, many, too much of it being produced at one time, it would actually damage the receptors for that chemical in your brain. And when it damages the receptors, your brain now requires more of it to feel any kind of pleasure. You can see how this is a cycle, of, uh, this is a how essentially a cycle. It's a very big issue because it is the basis of all addiction. What happens is you take, for example, if you take a drug, the drug is going to release a lot of dopamine, your dopamine receptors get damaged. You have to take that drug again because you're addicted now. The problem is you're gonna have to take more of that drug in order to feel the same pleasure you did before. And it's gonna, you're gonna have to take more of it and more of it and more of it over again until you end up overdosing and your body dies. That's how the devil attacks you. The devil will attack you through the flesh. The devil will put you into a downward spiral. If you read in Galatians chapter 15 and 17, we're gonna go to Galatians chapter 15 and 17. and verse 17. It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one, uh, to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The spirit allows man to control himself, himself from, from the dopamine, to control yourselves from your flesh your flesh trying to do sin, trying to enact and out whatever it feels most pleasurable to it. Um, in fact, I can use an example from, from Socrates and, and his, 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 um, his student Plato. What they philosophized, they believed that the more rational you are, the more human you are, meaning the, the less savage or the less animal you become. To be rational is to have your spirit taken to control of your thought, to have uh, the spirit of the Lord control everything that you're thinking, control, control your body from enacting whatever is savage. So instead of doing whatever is most pleasurable to us, we do what is right and what is righteous in the eyes of God. That is what it means to be more human, to be less sinful, and more human and less savage. See, the devil is trying to put us into this savage mode when we need to be human. In fact, the prescription towards a healthy mind and a healthy dopamine balance is detoxification, which includes eating well and feeding the spirit, of course. Meditating, which is meditating upon the word of God and meditating through prayer and abstaining from whatever, bad, whatever sin that you're battling with. That is how you overcome sin and temptation through the word of God and using the name of Jesus. Because once we use the name of Jesus, demons tremble and they do not have power over us. They do not have power over our minds because once we use the word of God, they must know that it is absolute truth for it is written. Next thing we must overcome, we must overcome doubt. Firstly, we shouldn't doubt ourselves. The Lord God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and strong mind. Another thing we must not doubt is God. Why should we doubt God? God is all-powerful. He is all-powerful. He is omnipotent. He can help us in whatever issues we have. He can help us in whatever, whatever sickness 
whatever disease, whatever financial issue, whatever, whatever life issue. If you need to get smarter, God can help you. If, if you need to get through a dramatic situation in your family, God can help you. Because God is, a, is peace in your life. God can fix your issues because he is omnipotent and his Holy Spirit can work in and through us and work in, in this world to fix these problems. But the doubt of God comes from conflicting ideas from other people and the enemy. It comes like a flood that can drown us. The Bible says, and, and that's why we need to protect ourselves and create ourselves an ark. An ark to protect ourselves from this flood. For example, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And that Noah walked with God. And that Noah did according unto all the Lord had commanded him. Build an ark that consists of the word of God. Walk with God and talk with God. Closely follow his commandments and the Lord will find grace in you. And he will save you from the grasp of the enemy. Everything comes back to the word. It's all a cycle and everything comes back to a word. This is the key to overcoming the word of God. You know what? Another thing we need to build. We need to build an ark of friends. Proper Christian friends, a proper Christian environment, and a proper congregation around ourselves. The first verse, in the first verse and the first psalm, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I'm saying to build yourself an environment that does not hinder your beliefs, but that only uplifts your spirit. And brings you closer to God. That's what a church congregation is for. That's what we're all here for each other for. There's a praise team to help you worship God. There's a pastor and there's a preacher to bring you closer to God. By giving you ideas about how to be, how to get closer to God. How to talk to God. How to pray with God. How to pray to God. That is what a pastor does. That is what the praise team does. And that is what your church friends will do. We pray for each other. We go to each other's house. We donate to each other. This is, what, this is the job of a congregation, to uplift each other. And when we go out in the world, we do not sit in the, in the seat of the, of the sinner, nor sit with the scornful. We don't mix with those people. We, we help them. We help them bring them closer to God. But what we must do is create in ourse- with ourselves an environment, a godly environment, with our friends. Here is the place where you find true friends in church. In church is the place where you find true friends. I can I can give you an example. For me and Desan, me and Desan, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Desan, but me and Desan, whenever I need him, I can easily call Desan. And me and Desan, what we do, we talk about God. 90% of our conversation is about God. Me and Desan just talk about God read over the Bible, talk about something that we've seen in the Bible, and we learn off of each other. And the only thing that Desan does for me is, bring, is bring my faith, make my faith better, bring me closer to God. And the only thing that I'm doing for Desan is bringing him closer to God. That is the relationship that we ought to have with our brothers and sisters in church. That is what makes us overcomers. That is what makes us overcomers. This can, we can help each other overcome through, the, through prayer, through love, care, and advice. One last thing. You know that you've become an overcomer when the devil is afraid of you. I know he's afraid of us. And this is a truth. It is a Bible truth that he is afraid of us. Since we are children of God, we inherit his righteousness through Jesus Christ. And therefore, our heel shall bruise the snake's head. And therefore, he is under our feet. And that's why every time Pastor John says to do this, because he's under our feet. He's under our feet. He's scared of us. He's scared of us. And when we come together as a congregation... 
and when we lock arms and pray together, there is no stronger force that can be created on earth when we're all together. Remember, when more than two people are gathered in the presence of the Lord, he's here with us, right? And the devil's scared of that. He's scared of that because the, the, name, the name Jesus, the, the time we mention the name Jesus, he has to flee. He has to flee. Remember, the word of God is light. The word of God is light and he is darkness. Darkness must flee in the presence of light. The moment we mention the name Jesus. Remember, last time I came here, I said that. Jesus, I like that name. I still like that name. And I will always like that name for the rest of my life, for the rest of my existence. The name Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. I'll say it again and I'll say it every time I come up here. Demons tremble at that name, Jesus. Say it with me again, church. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Jesus. Sorry, I'm really, I, I don't know what's happening with my ears. Jesus. The devil's scared. He's trembling now. He has to leave. The devil has to leave. He's out the door. Because of the name Jesus, there's so much power in the name Jesus, just like the kids were singing. There is so much power in the name Jesus. And through the name of Jesus, we can declare victory. We declare victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. I like that song. Man. But we can declare victory in the name of Jesus. And this is how we become overcomers. And this is why the word says he gives us the morning star. Because when we have the morning star... We have the name of Jesus. We have Jesus to use against any, against any power of evil. That is our shield and that is our sword. So, to wrap it up all together and to wrap up tonight, I'd like to say that through our congregation together, through the name of Jesus through the word of God, we, can, we, have, we are overcomers. And I declare that all of us are overcomers. It doesn't, I don't care if you are sick. I don't care if you have, are going through financial debt. I don't care if you have trouble in school, whether you're having trouble learning in school. It does not matter to me. I declare that you are an overcomer in the name of Jesus. And that the devil has no power over you. And that no no weapon formed against us shall prosper because we are overcomers. We are overcomers. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. So I just want to close out in prayer tonight. Let us thank the Lord and say hallelujah. Thank the Lord for his word and for his grace that he has found within us. For saving us from the enemy with his name and with his word. Father God, I'd just like to thank you. And Lord, I just want to, to worship you and say hallelujah. Hallelujah is the only word that can come out of my mouth. And that is the highest praise because you deserve the highest praise. You deserve exaltation. Because in, it, through you, we are empowered. We feel empowered and at our lowest points, we know that we can call upon your name and call upon your blood to wash us, to clean us, and to clean all situations in our life. And that no evil can prosper against us because you are all good. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we thank you again. And Lord, as we walk out of this place, as we... As we leave this place, we, may we be filled with the Holy Spirit and may we be filled with your word that we can use against any evil that tries to attack us. That we, may we be filled with the word of God and with the word of God that we call Jesus, the word that makes the evils tremble. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for this word. And Lord God, fill us tonight. Fill us tonight, whatever empty spaces we have, I pray that, we f that you fill it, Lord God. Whatever, whatever is going through our lives, I pray that we f you fill it. And Lord God, I pray, I pray that whatever sickness is in our body, that you clean it, Lord God. You cleanse that sickness. Because in the name of Jesus, no sickness can have any power over us. 
no sickness. And Lord God, for those of us that are going through debt, for those of us that are going through any financial trouble, uh, Lord God, I pray that you overflow that bank account with, with your blessings, Lord God. That you fix any issues in families, whatever family issues that's, that's happening right now, Lord God, that you fix it in the name of Jesus. You bring peace in that house, Lord God, for that house is claimed by you and that house is in you. That house, you are in that house, Lord God. And where you are, there is peace in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, I pray it and I declare it by the Holy Spirit and by the Father and by the, whole, and by the Son. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that tonight. Come on. Come on, stand to your feet tonight. Come on, you can give our young people... See, this is our future. This is what I was talking about. And if we don't pray for them, if we don't encourage them, if we don't give them the tools that they need, they will not be successful. And they are in our court. They are in our church. They're in our homes. They are part of our family, the church family. I, I want to do something. I know the time is gone, but you'll forgive me for that. But I want all the young people... If you, are, if you are young, would you make your way up to the front now, please, quickly. All of you down at the back, the dance team, the young kids, everybody, come, come, just make your way up to the front and just stand alongside here. Face, face me. Look at me. Turn this way, everybody. Just stand along. Just spread out along here. All of our young people, come. Look at them coming. Come on, put your hands together. You, you can spread out some more. You can go around some more. Go around some more. Go around this way and go around that way. They're, they're coming. Okay, don't, don't bunch up. I want you to spread out. I want you to just spread out this way. A long line. Go, go around that way. You, you'll understand in a minute. Just go around. Okay, and here's what I want you to do. All of you in the congregation, I want you to come and stand behind them so you can pray for them. Come on. This is our people. This is our children. And we want to pray for them. We want to bless them. We want to surround them with the hands of God. Just, just come. So, so just spread out. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, just, just, just come and just touch one of them or whoever you, you can reach. Just reach out your hand. and You see, that's what I was saying, to spread out as far as you can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just say a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for our young children. We, we thank you for our young adults. We, we thank you, Lord, that, God, they are taking the right path, oh, God. And, and Lord, we are laying our hands upon them uh, as, Lord, that they can, oh, God, uh, feel and experience you, oh, Lord. Uh, Father, I thank you for their lives, oh, God. Uh, I thank you for a blessing that is upon them. Uh, I thank you for your protection over them, oh, God. Uh, I thank you, Lord, that you have separated them uh, and you have called them out, oh, God, you have kept their lives. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name for them. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for their lives. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you. We give you praise for them. Oh, God, I pray in their going out and in their coming in, they will be blessed, oh, God, in their homes, in their schools. Oh, God, that they will excel, oh, God, and do exploits for you, oh, God. They will excel in ministry, oh, God. They will excel academically, oh, God. They will excel, oh, God. They will make the honor rolls, oh, God. You will raise them up, oh, God, to be men and women, oh, God, of greatness, oh, God. 
men and women uh, of greatness, oh God, with inspiration uh, and aspirations, oh Lord. Uh, oh God, that your kingdom, oh God, uh, will be blessed. Uh, it will be, oh God, uh, an overflow uh, that will come, oh God, from this church uh, and from this ministry, oh God, uh, that our young people uh, will grow up as godly children. Uh, and God, they will grow up uh, under your nurture and under your care, oh God. Oh, we just give you praise and we give you thanks, oh God. We just, uh, oh God, pour out your blessing upon them. Just pour out your blessing upon them, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just put your hands together for the Lord? Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, it took great effort to get everybody up here. So now we're going to sing that song. Freedom. Amen. Amen. Okay, don't leave. Let's finish with that song. They're going to sing it. We're going to celebrate. We're going to praise God. Amen. Amen. Are you free? Amen. Come on, are you free? Amen. Okay, go ahead. Sing a little louder than before. Oh. 